Hi, I'm Jim Shaw, I'm publisher of the Colonial Times Magazine and a member of the Board of Directors of Lex Media. Uh, welcome to the 2017 edition of Coffee with the Candidates. Uh, this year, uh, we'll be talking with several candidates who are running for the one-year seat for the Lexington School Committee. Um, the Bill Hurley, who was the, uh, the chairman, had to resign uh, recently because of some health considerations. And um, so because of that, uh, we have a one-year seat up for, for uh, election and um, along with a three-year seat. So today we'll be talking with, uh, I think, seven candidates that are seeking the one-year seat. Um, but today we're going to start with um, uh, Burke Oral, who's with us right now here in the studio at Lex Media. Um, Burke is a 12-year resident of Lexington, roughly, thereabouts. He's a member of the technical staff at Staples in the Velocity Lab and um, was one of the several candidates that stepped up out of concern for the public schools. So I, I want to start right out, out of the, the gate here, Burke, with, uh, with a question of, you know, with so many candidates running. For you personally, why is this important to you? Um, there are a number of reasons. Uh, the first one is um, my daughter is at uh, Lexington High School. And, and I have been seeing how much she's getting stressed. And I think the stress accumulates over the years. Uh, parents and the school system is not aware that we are every year adding something to the stress level of the children. And by the time you get to the high school, this gets immense and it shows up. And then I see that uh, they are not just learning because they want to learn, because lifelong learning is more important. Uh, it should be with love and joy, and I see that she is and her friends are studying for exams, uh, quizzes, get the homework done, and the basic tenet of learning is getting lost somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So I figured out uh, what we can do, um, and I have been uh, talking to some of the uh, teachers. I go to all the uh, school events, um, department heads. And I realized that um, we are not really being on the preventative side of uh, uh, managing the stress. Um, I've seen in the past uh, teachers putting a clown nose and then prating. Uh, these are comic reliefs, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's just but you support day. that? Of course. I mean, yeah. you, you need to have um, good stuff happening every so often, but that has to be systematic. Um, so I first started thinking what we can do. So uh, my motto is uh, learning doesn't start or end in the school, it continues. School gives us the ability to learn, and you learn with love and joy. You do your homework, uh, you do your studies, play your music, uh, just because you want to do it. That's the human uh, character. Then, if you have to be measured, that's because you need to achieve certain goals, but measurement shouldn't be the... Uh, Mm -hmm. ultimate point. How do you propose to, to achieve that? You know, it's, you know, the discussion around stress and students has been taking place for several years. We also have a website for that too, stress.lexington, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Okay. So what do you suggest? I mean, you suggest um, working with the, with the administration uh, to find ways to alleviate this. I know they, they have the youth risk behavior survey they do. So they're able to sort of talk to the students in a way and sort of glean some information out of there so they know exactly where the stress is coming from. So once you identify the problem, what is actually the solution? How do you get to the point where the kids are not feeling the stress? Did we identify the problem? Because the surveys are not really helping. Okay. Surveys are statistical numbers. I have been in technology um, all, over 30 years, mm -hmm. um, done enough schooling to know that when you put the numbers in a bucket, you have lost the individual in there. Right. Because it's a statistical representation, it's an average. Right. Um, who knows the student most? The teacher knows it. Mm -hmm. But the teachers do not know how much load they are giving to the student. The first thing is stress comes from a load, which is a demand on the student. If every teacher thinks that this little homework, this little DBQ, 
uh, this little reading is just the right amount. Mm -hmm. And then if every teacher starts thinking of it, you have multiplied by six, seven, eight times. Right. Now you have got your uh, problem in that. The teachers don't know how much the other teacher is doing because there is no communication among the teachers right. about the student. That's the first thing in that. Well, that's you your observation, right? That's the, that's the basis of everything mm -hmm. because we are schedule-based society right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you have got a plethora of uh, classes for the student. Uh, they choose all these classes. Now we get into the mayhem of uh, classes, the scheduling, and then the student has its load, and then the teacher doesn't know what the other teacher is doing. And then you go to the counselors. Counselors cannot spend time with you because they have got 100 students for you right. to deal with. So the counselors, you think, are, <coughs> are over... Burden with the number of students. Counselors are definitely overburdened. And they're burden. dealing with college applications. They're dealing with a lot of other things. Exactly. Then, okay. So now then there's the homeroom. Uh, what do we do at the homeroom? Uh, people listen to music, mm -hmm. um, do some homework uh, sometimes. Um, they are just being guardians in the classroom. Right. We could be able to turn the homeroom into more of what's happening with the student. Um, in the early years, my daughter went to a private school to Waldorf. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get an idea about how the private schools and now I see the uh, public schools are working. Right. When the teacher knows about the student, you do not have to measure. Right. You do not have to uh, take refuge in uh, multiple, question, multiple right. choice questions. You do not have to go on and then have them write essays right. because you know the performance of the child. Right. Well, the fundamental difference with Waldorf as opposed to other private schools is, is the, uh, the teacher follows the students all the way through the... That's so right. That, so there's obviously an edge. But how we can do this thing in the public school system right. when we have got different scheduling? This be, uh, creates the uh, reasoning behind that the teachers have to talk among themselves right. about the student. You need to know what's happening. Well, it that, is very hard. That uh, may call into question the dean system at the high school. I mean, we, we, you know, we've got obviously we've got elementary, we've got the, the middle schools, and we've got the high school. Um, the dean system, you know, for better or for worse, is what sort of... Uh, uh, Have we tried to get an appointment with the dean mm -hmm. or send an emails back and forth? Mm -hmm. You get brushing emails. Really? I can have several of them. Okay. That's been your personal experience? That's personal experience. That includes some of the department heads, too. Okay. Um, uh, you get canned emails, and they do not address the situation okay. very often. Um, the most important thing is... How do we know a student is succeeding? Right. It comes from the teachers. Right. Counselors are the glue, and homeroom brings the students in one place where at least they can feel that they belong to some common right. uh, group. Otherwise, their friendships, mm -hmm. uh, their community is a temporal community. Right. Okay. So uh, let's follow this strain and then I, uh, this line of discussion, and then I actually want to sure. jump off to a couple other things. So when um, the stress that comes from it, it leads, you know, what we found through the behavior surveys is that it leads to risky behavior. Kids want to relieve stress and they do it in different ways. Um, you know, the, the, I, I wonder, you know, do you think, uh, you know, uh, support for students, uh, let, let's say, who may be leaning towards drugs and alcohol to relieve stress, is that an important part of the curriculum, per well, se? Of course, it's an important part of the curriculum. Uh, does anyone know the corners where the drugs are being dealt in school? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, There are it's yeah. well-known spots, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, we need to prevent. Right. Um, if the students are in that path, we need to spend more effort and time. Yeah. And That's not to say, by not, the way, not, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm being naive here. But I'm not sure that there are places where kids are hanging out selling drugs. Kids get the drugs one way or the other, whether they, and they, and they get them off campus, they bring them on. I don't want to leave people with the idea that, you know, that we've got drug pushers at the high school because that's, as far as I know, that's not the case. But we've got um, kids are using drugs and they're taking and they're making risky choices. Uh, for sure, but I just want to make sure that people understand that you know they can send their kids to the high school without the fear of you know being accosted by a drug dealer in the corridor. So, um, but you know one one thing they were talking about maybe relieving stress was maybe a later start time for the high school. You know, so the kids have a little extra time to get get going in the morning if they're working later at night on homework. What do you think about that? Um, I like that idea. <clears throat> I'm not a morning person as well, and. Mm -hmm. um, 
most uh, younger kids are not morning people. Right. Um, because you want to do things and you stretch your day. Right. When you stretch your day in the morning, you want to come up uh, out of the bed fresh. Mm -hmm. um, there is no need to adjust ourselves to the um, cycle of the sun, right. nor the cycle of some preset thing that things start at um, right. eight o'clock or seven o'clock. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. color of uh, what's that, seven thirty-five? If I'm not wrong, it's at one early time. Right. I can't even get up to do this, but right. I'm up late too. Well, there are a lot of factors that contribute. You know, when you've got a, a certain amount of school buses and you've got to be able to get, you know, elementary kids to school at a certain time at six different locations. You've got two middle schools and you've got the high school. So um, that becomes, um, you know, an issue. Uh, so I do support uh, late uh, start. Mm -hmm. That will make a um, uh, better uh, timetable for the students. Sure. And then they can spend a much more comfortable okay. time at school. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the spirit of cooperation. Um, for instance, you know, the, the superintendent is, for all intents and purposes, the chief person who sort of creates policy, is guided by the board. The board, I guess the board sets the policies, the, the, the superintendent implements. But the superintendent, you know, um, we've got a very good uh, superintendent with Dr. Tchaikovsky. And um, how do you feel about making sure she's supported, you know, working closely with the administration to fill some vacancies that are coming up? You know, the high school principal just recently, I think uh, last night, announced her yes, retirement. I got the email. Yeah. Um, the human resources director for the schools um, is going to retire. The music director is going to retire. These are positions that, you know, have a, will have a, an incredibly important impact on the direction of the school system. Um, how do you feel about working with the administration to find the right people? And, and working as a new member yeah, of the board, by sure. the way, learning the, to sort of st where to step and how to work with others. Um, well, I have been working with people uh, for too many years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I deal with multiple projects, uh, my, multiple technologies and uh, problems uh, for the business. So uh, I don't think it's going to be any that different. I come from academic background. I have uh, studied at MIT and worked in academia for too many years. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is about learning. Right. So who can teach better? Uh, and you can understand the candidates very easily and mm -hmm. you can communicate with people uh, knowing that uh, you have a common goal. How can I get my kid, mm -hmm. my neighbor's kids, uh, my um, community's uh, children, get a better education. And you can understand these things with um, interviews and working with people together. Right, well great. So we got a couple of minutes left here and I wanna make sure you have an opportunity to really make a persuasive argument for yourself as a candidate. You, you know, if, you, if I was to say, how do you stand out from the seven or eight other candidates that are seeking the seat? Why should, if uh, I'm elected and voter, I never miss an election, why should I vote for Burke Oral? Um, because I support uh, lifelong learning with love and joy, I am thinking how can I reduce the workload on the children and how we can get together to a good place where mornings are not stressful, uh, evenings are joy, and when books are opened, students are feeling that they are getting something so that they can enjoy life going on forward. Um, I would like to make sure that spending is more uh, resound and um, understood. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking to work uh, with the rest of the board as well as the school. Um, I'm gonna be appearing uh, with many of the events. Mm -hmm. And my thinking is, I'm applying for a one year. I right. could have done the three years. Right. One year is a goal to see what I can do. And in one year you can accomplish mm -hmm. limited things. If you were to be elected to a one year seat, there would then be the election to the three-year seat coming up the following year. Would you seek re-election? Um, I have to see if, I can, if I'm can. If i performing and then people are liking it. It is not an easy task right. to say that I want to have lifelong learning and if I haven't done anything, why should I run? Because I have failed my own motto. Mm -hmm. So for to do, to do this, I'm planning to make more effort and be more active, not in the board of the school committee, by working with the uh, principals, uh, deans, and uh, students, because you can learn from people, okay. not in the boardroom or in meetings, 
but actually interacting with them. Excellent. Well, Burke, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, normally, we'd have a little extra time, but because we have so many candidates to talk with, um, by the time everybody gets a chance to look at all of these interviews, it'll be almost two hours long. So uh, I want to thank you for being here, and I wish you the very best on thank you. March 6th, right? Is the election yes, day? Yes, March 6th. Oh, great. And, and by the way, if people wanted to find out about who, a little bit more about you, you have a website. You I do have a website. It's and been all uploaded. Uh, it is... Um, uh, my name, burkoral.wixsites.com okay. slash Lexington Schools. Good. Well, I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.